Mazin and Virginia Mazin are joining us now from Schroeder's uh, International. Uh, Virginia, good noon to you. And I, I want to bring up a chart here. You don't talk individual stocks, but let's look at luxury in China. This is one of your optimistic themes. Rolls Royce, first of all, folks, if I'd said to you, how's Rolls Royce done, would you have gone from 70 to three, uh, 600 or whatever? What a booming chart that is. Virginia, you look at these luxury brands and you look at China and it spells good news for you. Yeah, I think, the, the, you know, we have to put it in perspective. I think China is the second largest economy in the world, uh, has a lot to offer on a 10, 20 year basis. Uh, in the short term, clearly you've had uh, some disruption, mostly because of the impact of the Japan earthquake. If we look at the car industry, as you know, some of the numbers that came out today were actually a bit weaker, uh, mostly because Japanese car uh, sales in uh, China, which is a, nearly a quarter of all sales in China, have been slower. Uh, and overall, you have a tightening happening currently in China as the government is trying to rein in some of the inflationary pressure. Mm -hmm. I believe that a large part of this tightening uh, is, is uh, coming to an end uh, because uh, if you look at the industrial numbers that came out recently, they were on the weaker side and that we are positioning the economy for a very strong 2012. Right. So within that, if you can look through the, the, the short-term uh, impact, I still like luxury. Uh, I still like the aerospace sector uh, because right. I think there's a lot of potential there. And uh, the footage there of the Rolls-Royce car, folks, that was thanks to Mark Crumpton. We thank him for letting us to take a shot of his Rolls. Virginia, when you look at emerging markets, Jim Rogers has lightened up to be kind. He's short emerging markets, just too much, too soon, too good. Have you lightened up your allocation to emerging markets? Yeah, you know, as bottom-up stock pickers on a global basis, uh, we frame our stock uh, picking decisions with the three key themes of super cycle, demographics, and climate change. But for each stock, we have a fair market value target, if you want. And already in the fourth quarter of uh, 2010, we could see that a lot of our positions were quite rich. So we actually cut our position. Uh, at this point uh, in the market, I think that over the next uh, two or three months, we might continue to have some volatility, and that will offer some good buying opportunity once you can look through that uh, short-term volatility. The key is to assess uh, inflationary pressure. As you know, because of super cycle or the role of the large emerging markets economy onto the global economy, commodities prices have been pushed upward. That in turn, uh, in addition to uh, strong wage growth, for example, in China, has fueled some inflation that most governments uh, in emerging markets are oh. trying to rein in. No, Virginia, but I, I wonder if we have inflation concerns, how do you dovetail that into very accommodative major central banks? Is President Trichet correct or is Chairman Bernanke correct? Well, that's really interesting because this is what I call uh, the bipolar world. And, uh, you know, one of the questions we were asking ourselves in the fourth quarter of 2010 was, is the medicine that is being given to the world because of the problems of the developed world turning into a mild poison for emerging markets? So what you've seen is this normalization of monetary policy around the world after this big, you know, crisis or support uh, system that was put in through liquidity uh, during uh, the crisis and that normalization of monetary policy has taken place at different speed and different time uh, depending on which part of the world you're in. So mm -hmm. emerging markets started first with actually really China starting first. Now we've had Europe uh, as you know increasing rates and I think the last one to do it will be the US and that probably will mm -hmm. not be until 2012 and possibly the second half 2012. If China can't use a normal monetary policy to they do that with renminbi uh, is one of your predictions that we see a stronger yuan as we go through 11 and 12 Yes, I think that uh, the, 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 the way we tighten monetary policy in China is really threefold. We've used interest rates, we've used higher reserve requirements in banks, and what we call quantitative tightening, where basically banks are instructed not to lend to certain sectors or to have, they have a general quota of lending, if you want. I think the last uh, quantitative uh, uh, tightening, the last portion that I've talked about, mm -hmm. we are close to an end of that tightening, and I think the other two 
counterparts will continue, that uh, will continue to support the renminbi. I strongly believe that the renminbi will become uh, an exchange of uh, 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 security, uh, sorry, a currency uh, that will become a security currency, if you want, with full convertibility within the next five years. Right. Very quickly, Virginie, China auto growth. Bring up the chart here. Here's those booming auto sales. You mentioned climate change. Is China going to get bored on climate change or are they just going to sell the next marginal automobile? Oh, that's very interesting. That's a very interesting question. So, as you know, the current uh, yearly sales in China of cars is about 15 million uh, on an annual basis. Now, that's on a pool of cars of about 70 million. We forecast that the pool of car in China is going to grow over the next 10 years to 200 million, uh, which is a very rapid growth right. and actually really one of the strongest growth in the world. Now, what you're seeing clearly as a result of that uh, and of activity in general, industrial activity, China China uh, is now the largest emitter uh, of CO2 in the world, and it's very important okay. to understand clearly what the five-year plan in terms of reduction of emission uh, is targeting, and clearly more efficient car, electric cars, well, hybrid cars are a big priority. Wonderful. Virginie, thank you so much for coming to us from London. Virginie Mazinov of Schroeder's.